going, but I think, I think that little bit of um, housekeeping at the beginning um, is worth it to be able to be in the comfort of our homes and, and do this via Zoom. I think we also learned last year that we reach way more uh, Rotarians. So welcome to the 2024 District 6630 Grant Management Seminar. My name is Sandy Narragon, and I serve as your chair of the district grant committee. Uh, presenting with me today is uh, Larry Lohman, Katie Yeager, who's our stewardship chair. Larry is the district foundation chair, and Terry Speck is our treasurer and recently announced district governor nominee. No, dis is that it? Hopefully. District governor nominee designate. District what he said. <laughs> um, I don't believe there are other um, members of the leadership team on, um, but I will recognize them. District Governor Julie Randall, District Governor-elect, excuse me, Dale Smith, and District Governor nominee is Bob Oborn. So we've got several seminar documents we are going to be sending out to you via link next week. Um, a couple folks mentioned that there are documents on the website right now. Those are last year's. Some of them will remain unchanged. Some of them will be updated. So we'll push out to you the information um, when it's updated next week. The, some of the information that will be in that packet, those are, there's an application checklist. There's an application flow chart. Um, there are two MOUs, which are memorandums of understanding. One is from Rotary International, and one is an addendum, and that is specific to District 6630. Um, both of them are extremely important. You're gonna hear us mention them a lot today. Um, they're important because they contain the terms of receiving these district grant dollars. Um, they are to be signed by the, so the club's 2024 president-elect and 2025 president-elect. And Katie may speak to this later, but that presents confusion a lot each year. And, and we usually have to send at least one or two back to say, oh, wrong folks signed it. But maybe you can, if you can think of it this way. So Rotary year, of course, starts July 1. We are in 2024. We're in, uh, we're still in last year's Rotary year, so 23, 24. And we're doing all of this in preparation for the upcoming Rotary year. And we're going to be asking you to um, accept terms and responsibilities for next year. So that's why we're asking for the leadership, president elect of 2024, president elect of 2025. That's who would be signing because you're the ones who are committing your club to follow the rules and follow the terms of that under that memorandum of understanding. But please let us know, reach out to me or Katie or Larry at any time if you're confused. Another question we get a lot, what if we don't have that person yet? What if we don't know who our president elect for 2025 is yet? As long as your president elect for 2024 signs, because that's, I mean, got bigger issues if you don't know who that is yet. But um, a lot of times we get it. You don't have that 2025 person yet to be president elect, but you've got a secretary, maybe you've got a treasurer, you've got someone in a position of leadership and continuity in your club. So that's who you would choose um, to sign that MOU. But again, reach out to Katie and I, or, or, I, or me. The um, PowerPoint presentation slide will be part of that packet. Also, you've got the link if you signed in um, right before we started, I put a link to the handouts in the chat. Some other resources that will be there for your use would be the terms and conditions of Rotary Grants for our district, the areas of focus statement, which I'll be covering today, some a global grants needs assessment tool, um, what we fund, what's eligible, there are, there's an example of a sample application and a sample final report. So purpose of today, we want you to know and understand how to manage a Rotary grant. We wanna be able to answer questions. We're gonna talk about stewardship expectations. And for our, our purposes, stewardship is the careful and responsible management of financial, financial assets. So these Rotary dollars that we're going to be distributing, but it's more than that. It's also you know, 
trusted relationships, the, the rotary reputation around the world is impeccable. And so is our local rotary reputation within our community. And so great stewardship also means protecting not only the dollars, but that reputation. Um, we want to talk about that memorandum of understanding. We'll, we'll beat you to death with that today because it is your first step towards qualification um, that allows you to receive grant funding. And then we want to help you a little bit uh, plan for and apply for that funding. We're also going to talk about how in District 6630, we bring that decision-making power down from Rotary International. It's, you know, Rotary International um, is this huge, um, amazing entity that allows us to do this, but we bring it down to the club level. Your club is deciding on what projects you want to do. You're deciding which community um, folks are going to benefit from your projects. And then we oversee, district oversees, by approving and uh, helping you be great stewards of that money. So we're really empowering at the club level and the district level. We're gonna talk about two different types of grants. Um, there are district grants, which will be a majority of today, but we're also gonna to touch on global grants because we don't want to uh, forget about this amazing opportunity we have to serve the world. Most grants or all grants are gonna fall under uh, community, as community projects, humanitarian projects, scholarships and vocational training teams that typically falls under global, but there are, those are the types of grants that we'll be talking about today. Again, grant management, why is it important? We take this step and take it seriously because it's what ensures the projects have proper financial controls. Um, we wanna make sure that we stick to the technical standards that Rotary International and our district have put forth, um, again, to protect those funds and protect our reputation and allow you to have a really great successful project. We wanna be able to meet the needs of the beneficiaries. We don't, we don't do it just to do it, we do it so that there's a great impact in the community and we're able to cite that impact and spread the word about the great work that Rotary does within our communities. We wanna help you fulfill your objectives and uh, again, safeguard those Rotary funds. That's so important. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're gonna talk about qualification, designing a project, applying for and implementing a grant. And then Katie's gonna cover oversight and reporting. Um, I'll just take a moment here for uh, logistical sort of rules of engagement for today. Um, we, we found out last year that on Zoom, we can be a lot more effective if we get through the presentation um, and save your questions and your questions for the end. Um, that way we'll get you out on time. If you, you know, want to make sure you don't forget your question, write it down. You can throw it in the chat. We'll monitor that. I mentioned earlier, we won't stop to answer those questions as we're going through our presentations, unless it's something that, um, you know, if I misstate something or someone has a question, um, one of my other presenters uh, can stop me and, and let me know that there's something that needs our attention right away. But other than that, let's hold our questions till the end. All right, moving on, qualification. So this list of, of how to qualify, uh, two members from your club need to attend one of the grant management seminars. So I think Bert Middlefold, we saw that you already have two, great job. Um, if you don't have a second person from your club on today, you'll wanna encourage your club leadership. Uh, and it doesn't have to just be two. I mean, the more people that know about this, the better. Um, but at least two, and they've got two other opportunities, February 21st at 6 p.m. or March 9th at 9 a.m., both Zoom. So make sure you get your club covered. The properly signed MOU and the MOU addendum. Um, we're going to beat you over the head with the MOU reminders, uh, but it's really important. You have to be current. Your club has to be current on Rotary International and district dues. So um, that's really important to make sure that you are in good standing with Rotary International and, your dis and the district. You have to be current on any other grants that you've been, that you've received from the district. 
This is also really important. Katie's going to talk about it more, but you've got a six month. Uh, every six months, you have to let us know where you are. And it, it's really simple. We're, we we want to make it as easy for you as possible, but we will absolutely double check if you're current on your uh, outstanding grants. It, we won't deny you a grant, but we will work with you to get it brought up to your reporting up to speed before we can in good conscience um, release any additional funds. The club's per capita giving contribution to the Rotary Fund's annual fund of $40, that per capita is um, calculated on this year, the 23-24 Rotary contribution year. The reason is because the funds um, donated in that year are what are used to give us the funding for the 24-25 cycle. I want to um, clarify something here. Last year, we thought that this qualification number six, we thought that that was not allowed by Rotary International. And we have since um, your district governor-elect, Dale Smith, has clarified that that is allowed. We can um, require that clubs have the per capita contribution in order to qualify for district grants. Um, I get a lot of questions about this one, and uh, it's really about the the fairness of um, giving back to clubs who give to the fund, because that's where the funding is coming from. However, and Larry, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the clarification we found out was um, if a club doesn't qualify for the per capita giving, but they want to do a global grant, we cannot um, deny them based on the fact that they didn't meet that $40. Is that correct? You're you're correct. This is only is in reference to our our local DDF for our local projects or small grants. Gotcha. And so if this one's confusing to anyone, reach out, ask us during Q&A or reach out privately. But um, that one, um, the other thing I'll say is you have until June 30th. Um, I wouldn't wait that long because it takes Rotary International a little bit of time to catch up. But, um, you know, that's donations to the annual fund that are made in 23-24. Um, and then that's what would be used um, for us to fund our grants this coming cycle. Sandy, let me just make yes. one little clarification on that. Yes. The the funds that we give to the, to the foundation, they come back to us in three years. So in three years, if, gotcha. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. So the money we're using this year was donated three, or we'll be using this next year was donated three cycles ago. Okay. But so, is everything else I've said accurate? Because this absolutely. One, okay. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. I, I'm still learning too, everybody. <laughs> Um, and then finally, your president-elect needs to enter your club's foundation goal in Club Central. That's in Club Runner, or that's not in Club Runner. That's at rotary.org. In this instance, so the the this last one holds up a lot of clubs. Um, if you are the president-elect for this ensuing year and you have any questions about that, reach out to either Larry or to Dale Smith. I, if you haven't had your pets training yet, I don't know the timing of that, but I know they talk about it a lot. And Dale has been, every district governor really has been really good about helping me remind you about that. So maintaining your qualification. So every year you come to this seminar, every year we have you sign the MOU and that's because the grant dollars are distributed annually. And so we need to make sure that you're you as the leadership and your club know and understand that what those terms are within the MOU, because you have to abide by those terms and conditions. Um, there should be one club member that you select to handle the qualification process, because, and they have to have attended this year's seminar. Um, my old boss, one, one of my former um, bosses used to say, when more than one person's in charge, no one's in charge. Uh, everyone thinks the other guy's doing it. So if you um, take the time to appoint one person, that doesn't mean you can't elicit help from other folks, but if one person's in charge of getting that MOU and MOU addendum, not only properly signed, but submitted to Katie, um, that goes a long way um, to make sure that you're um, moving forward. And also the reason we want it to be a grant um, person who's attended the grant seminar is they also need to understand what this is all about. 
um, and what their uh, requirements are and responsibilities are. So um, finally, the implement they we want to fully implement the stewardship practices to prevent misuse of funds. And that doesn't always mean something sinister's happen, but misuse of funds can can merely even mean that you know you're spending money on something that wasn't in the proposal or you're not keeping accountability with receipts and that sort of thing. So um, that's maintaining qualifications um, cover all of those things, the MOU, who's attended and keeping track and being accountable for your grant dollars as we move through. I already mentioned that qualifications are valid for one year. Once you, you become qualified, your club is responsible for the grant dollars that you receive. This is something that I, when I first started in your shoes before I was ever even on grant committee, um, I didn't really fully understand how much I should have been keeping our board of directors, our leadership, our officers informed because it's not just the grant committee. It's not just your service committee that is working on these projects, but your whole entire club needs to be behind what you're doing and needs to understand that they're responsible for the grant funds. Another thing I'll throw out there is if for some reason you are the guy or woman at your club that's being the, the, the shepherd of all of this information and for some reason you need to step down, you need to pick another person, make sure they know they're in charge, preferably someone who's been through grant committee, um, and then let us know because there are times when we're reaching out and trying to get updated reports from someone who's been gone from the club for six months or a year. And that just really um, slows everything down. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, conflict of interest. So your club does need to disclose any conflicts of interest that might arise. And Rotary Foundation has a process for it. It doesn't mean that you can't qualify for a grant. It just means that it needs to be disclosed. There's a simple um, conflict of interest letter that we provide for you. And it just allows you to identify what that is. The types of conflicts of interest, probably the most common is the beneficiary of your grant dollars. So beneficiary in, in the funding, in the service work, maybe one of your Rotarians serves on their board of directors. Maybe one of your Rotarians serves as their executive director in some position of authority and connection with the recipient. So you would need to disclose that. Another um, example is you're utilizing a Rotarian um, as a vendor in a project. They're giving you a great deal on either the supplies or the service for your service project. Also, it's allowed, and maybe there it's a combination of some pro bono and some, some donations of in kind, um, but they're also charging for a, a portion of it. So you'd wanna make sure um, that that is properly disclosed. We're gonna move on to the designing of a project. First things to bring up, um, we mentioned earlier that Rotary International has several areas of focus You'll want to make sure that the project that you're considering falls within one of these seven areas of focus. I would I always say I think we'd be hard pressed to find one that doesn't, because Rotary is dedicated to causes that build relationship, relationships, improve lives, and create a better world locally and globally. So I think that um, finding a project that fits um, and meets a community need, it's it's pretty easy to find one that falls within these areas of focus, and those are. Peace and conflict resolution, supporting the environment. That's the newest one. Been around a few years now, though. Water and sanitation, maternal and health, I'm sorry, maternal and child health, disease prevention and treatment, basic education and literature, and then economic development, economic and community development. There's some best practices for successful grant projects. Um, first and foremost, your project needs to meet the community's needs. And that is a decision that the community decides. We, we don't um, impose our will on them. So that's one of the first things, you know, beneficiaries and benefactors are more likely to support and participate in a project that addresses the needs of the community. And they wanna know that it's gonna have a sustainable outcome. Um, that's gonna, that, that, that sustainability needs to continue 
um, in many cases beyond just your project timeline. Now, sometimes it's a one and done improvement and impact, and there is no question of sustainability, but um, you need to know and understand that you're doing what um, those you are helping truly, truly need. Having an implementation plan will keep you on task, keep you focused. Um, doesn't mean that you can't pivot when that is necessary. We know that um, in some cases, plans don't, um, projects don't end up looking like what they looked like when you first started. But creating your implementation plan will help you figure those things out um, oftentimes before you even get started. So it's very important. Katie's gonna talk uh, more about um, proper stewardship of your funds and records, but know that that is um, definitely a best practice with your projects. Um, two of the requirements within global are, it must be sustainable, global projects must be sustainable. Larry's gonna talk more about that and global projects must have a partner connected to them. Okay. So the needs assessment, um, that just means asking members of your, your community what they need, what strengths they bring to the project, what do they need from you, um, how how can Rotary, how can Rotarians help you? Is there another another expert partner that you might need to bring on? But it's really about sitting down and having a conversation with the entity or, or population group that you're going to serve. You might think you know what they need, but let them definitely have a hand in planning that project and letting you know what they need. Because once you do that, that's where you're gonna identify who else do you need to bring to the table? What resources do you need? Is there any skill set that's missing? Um, what's available with your, in your own club to help you? reach success with the project. Like I said, if it's not available in your club, who might you partner with? Other clubs, um, maybe someone within your community that could help. Um, is Rotary International, could they help? Or a non, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting a frog, a non-Rotarian uh, organization, but it's all about bringing the right resources to the table and talking um, with those you're going to serve. Budgets are also very, very, very important. And budgets um, are part of that very first inquiry. The very first set of questions that we ask you also are gonna ask, what's your budget? What do you think it's gonna cost to achieve what you wanna do within the community? So be realistic about it, um, but comprehensive. You wanna make sure that um, you have the adequate funding. If you're choosing a supplier, you want to do that the same way you would if you were making a purchase as an individual. So get competitive bidding. Make sure that you're getting the highest quality goods at the best prices and that those people, whoever you choose as a vendor, whoever you're choosing for supplies, um, that you think they're going to be able to deliver what they've promised. So just being a, a responsible shopper. Um, clubs need to keep records of all the bids that they submitted, especially if you are utilizing a Rotarian. Um, to be that provider, that vendor. <clears throat> and we talked about the disclosure of the conflict of interest. That's, again, really important. Take a drink. Excuse me. <clears throat> so applying for and implementing the grant. Um, I know that's a lot of dates. <laughs> We updated this screen because we wanted you to see um, sort of the flow and, and understand it big picture. Um, we also added a date this year. We are in strongly encouraging all of you and everyone who attends the grant management seminars um, to start inputting your grant uh, idea, your project ideas, March 15th. That means your MOU is already submitted and all the other qualifying steps have been taken. And the reason is because last year we had 31 grant applications, probably 27 of them came in the last day. Um, and that just means that's a lot of projects and a lot of grant applications to review all at one time. So we're strongly encouraging you anytime after March 15th to go in 
uh, and March 15th, and you've been qualified um, to start that grant inquiry process. Um, we're hoping that spreads it out a bit. What else will that do? It will allow the grant committee to start hearing presentations as early as April 1st. We meet the first Monday of every month. And so rather than waiting all the way until June to start hearing presentations and then having these marathon meetings where there's you know, 16 of you sitting in our Zoom room waiting to present, we're really hoping to spread it out this year and start hearing grant inquiry presentations um, in April. And then you see the, you know, the, the May meeting date is there for your information, just so you know you can present if you've been qualified and submitted your inquiry. I sh we should have this May 15th date in red because the last day that you can input your idea, your proposed project into Club Runner is May 15th. And it's May 15th at 11.59 p.m. is the last date that it would be accepted. And we have to do that. It's hard enough to manage all of the ones that get in on time. We can't start um, having discussions about, well, what, what, it, what reason is a good enough reason to allow someone to be late? It's, it's really unmanageable. And it's unfair to the people and clubs who, who got everything done on time. Um, another committee date there. Um, I'm not going to talk to each one, but you you'll have the handout, um, some important dates for you to understand the overall big picture. We apply the reason why this is so important that you get it all done. The foundation chair, Larry, along with the district governor, have to put input a uh, or submit a spending plan to Rotary International. They, we have to be able to say with as close accuracy as we can, here's what we think we're gonna need in funding from Rotary International. And the reason we think that is we've got 20 clubs who've submitted project ideas, all fundable, and that's what we're asking for. So that we wanna have that done by July 15th. And then we, we spend the next um, 60 days or so having our clubs finalize their applications. Um, once we get the approval back from Rotary International and we have um, the amount of money we're going to be receiving, we start double checking and making sure applications are done. And also, I'm really talking long, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> they gave me a lot of slides. Um, so we make sure that the applications are completed and then we start approving funds to be distributed. Um, the very last day to submit your grant application is October 31st. I hope that you don't, it doesn't take that long, but we do close it off there because we need to get wrapped up and start um, getting ready for the next year's cycle. Projects can only begin after funding is approved and received. So um, this is really, really important on the timing of your projects. Um, your projects really can't start until, I'm gonna say September 1st to be really, really safe. It's possible that some years it could be the end of August, middle end of August, if every duck is in a row in time. But we, we're mentioning this because if your grant idea is something that's a project that's going to start in June, it's, it's not feasible for that project to be submitted because we would never be able to get you funding in time. May, might be a great club project. It's not a great district matching grant project. Um, this is going to be in your handouts. Um, it is just a checklist to let you know what sorts of things we can do in which month. Um, we give you a lot of opportunities to be able to submit your grant, to make your presentations. But this, we're hoping that this helps you, again, see big picture. I want to keep going. This is just a, the grant process at a glance. Um, we've, we're talking about all this stuff, but it's two months from now and you can't remember this will be a great slide to help you remember that. Applying for the district grants, reminder, 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 the last day that you can submit your inquiry is May 15th. Um, you have to have met that Rotary International fundability criteria that we talked about. You wanna choose a project that support, has Rotary Club support and Rotary Club involvement. <clears throat> Excuse me. The um, smallest match we'll make is 500. So your project needs to be $1,000. And then the 
this all happens after the district uh, confirms that your club is qualified. And Katie's gonna talk about that a little bit more. So this is another really important one that has a caveat, and that is that we will match project grant dollars fi between $500 and up to 250, and that big red, depending on how many clubs apply and the availability of funds. I mentioned that last year we had 31 clubs apply, so there was no way that we could do the two, the $2,500 match. It ended up being uh, $1,405. So um, can we tell you what that will be now? We cannot. Um, we can only tell you um, once the clubs have submitted their inquiries and we have an idea of what kind of participation we're going to have. Another reason why we're asking you to get it in early, we, we are hope we're hopeful that we'll know a little bit earlier what that funding will be. Funds cannot come from other grants. So you can't um, get a grant from the Akron Community Foundation in order to fund your portion of the matching grant. It, that's um, Rotary International does not allow that. Already said Mar the uh, application process is gonna open on March 15th, get those MOUs in. Deadline's May 15th, you've got two months. Presentations will happen in April, May, and June. They're two minute presentations, so nothing over taxing for you. You do your two minute presentation. I literally time them on my cell phone and then the grant committee asks you questions. And again, all of this information is going to be in um, Club Runner in the grant module. I should have mentioned, we are also this year gonna do a live demo we're gonna take you into Club Runner and show you much more detail than we've ever done uh, before, um, just to make sure that people are comfortable and know what they're looking for within Club Runner. I already talked about when we submit the spending plan and what that means. Um, another big reminder, wait for confirmation. Don't start your, don't start your projects until it's been confirmed that your project is not only approved, but that Rotary International has confirmed our funding. Okay, <laughs> um, that is it for my portion for now, but I'm gonna turn over to Larry so that he can review global grants. And then after Larry gets through that, we're gonna jump on Club Runner and show you what, um, what to expect within Club Runner. So Larry, I can be your clicker or do you want, I guess uh -huh. I'm your I'm your clicker, right? Yeah, you're going to be my clicker. <laughs> okay. okay. So <clears throat> good morning, everybody. Um, global grants is a little bit different than the district grants. Actually, it's quite a bit different. Um, the one thing is, is, if you are looking to do a global grant, the first thing you need to do, feel free to call me, email me. I am the global grant coordinator for the district. So I am the one that you will be working with through the whole process. And I'm happy to do that. Um Global grants, there are actually two areas that you got to uh, put your application in. First, you got to go to rotary.org. I want to bring up rotary.org to show you. Unfortunately, they're down for maintenance right now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when you go into rotary.org, you'll make your way to their grant center. And from there, you can you know start an application. Um, again, this can be the confusing part. So feel free to reach out to me and we'll walk through it together. I have no, you know, I, I am very happy to do that. But from there, what you'll do is you'll start filling out the application. Um, and once it's filled out, you're going to hit print PDF before you submit it. You're going to upload that PDF into Club Runner. So you'll actually start a grant in Club Runner for this as well, like you would the inquiry for the local district grants. Um, and you'll put that PDF in, uh, Sandy's going to show you where you're going to put that kind of information later on. But with this kind of a project or global grants, the, it's got a con continuously revolving, um, application date. So you can apply for a global grant anytime in the year. And as we said before, the $40 per capita that we ask that you give to, the Rotary Foundation does not apply to global grants. So any club, whether, you know, you still have to have come to the grant management seminar, though. 
you still have to sign the MOUs. That's Rotary International or the Rotary Foundation's requirements, but we don't have to meet that that other obligation. Um, with the global grant, you got to meet one of the seven areas of focus, if not multiple ones. I do recommend not going crazy. Try to stay to one to two areas of focus when you're doing a global grant, because otherwise you're going to have to do a whole lot of training and a whole lot of paperwork, and it makes the, the project almost unmanageable. So again, keep it simple. Formal community needs assessment has, has to be done on any global grant. Um, this can be attained from the Grant Center at rotary.org. Again, if you reach out to me, I will help you find this. This needs assessment, the cool thing about it was, it was the, the current one that we're using was developed from a project from this district um, back in 2008 to 2010. Um, and uh, the needs assessment we used on that project was so detailed, well, had the right detailing in it, and Rotary International loved it, so they adopted it. Um, the other thing is, is you your projects have to be sustainable. And what that is, and I'm gonna use a, um, you know, look at one of the projects that I've been involved with that a lot of the clubs on here have heard me talk about, you know, looking through. Uh, the Rotary Club of Kent, we've done water projects for now 25 years or so um, in El Salvador. Um, we want to make sure that those communities that we're working with, um, those projects meet not just today's needs, but multiple generations needs. So in the water projects that we have down there, we set up a, a water board. It's made up of 17 community members. And those 17 members are responsible for collecting any fees from the homeowners for the water, um, you know, up, upgrades of the system, maintenance of the system. If the system goes down, getting the right people in to repair it. And then also reporting back to the local Rotary Club down there on their project throughout years of it being in service. So that makes it sustainable because we know it's still up and running. That's what the sustainability portion is. You know, involving another rotary, involving rotary clubs in two districts, what that means is you as a, a uh, club doing a project in another country, you are going to be the partner club. You're going to need a host club in that country you're doing the work um, as well. And that host club, um, they, they still got to give a little bit of money to the project, but it's, it's only a minimum of $500. So it's not much for their buy-in, but you still need that partnership because sometimes, you know, we talk about Rotarian involvement in projects. Well, you do still need it in global grants. It's kind of hard for sometimes the partner clubs to get people down to those areas. So we use the host club for those, the Rotarian involvement. So um, minimum budget for this is a $30,000 project. And if you look, if you see on the thing, I have a global grants example and how it's broken down. So out of club money, that means the money that your club's raised or you've gone out to other rotary clubs and they've put money in. So it doesn't have to be just an individual club. Um, the last project that I had, I had 14 rotary clubs throughout the U.S. and Canada involved. So and multiple district funds. So you put in the 10,715, you match your district designated funds will match 10,715 if we're just doing it from our district. Um, other districts do it a little differently, but that's where we need to bring the match to. And then the World Fund, which is the Rotary Foundation's portion, they match 80% at this point of the district designated fund match. They do no longer match the club dollars. Um, and that went away with COVID because in COVID, as we know, we had a lot of funding that we were putting out there from the Rotary Foundation and they ran their funds pretty well dry. So now we're trying to recoup and um, you know we don't have as much to put out there right now. But if you add those up, it brings you up to $30,002. 
And that's, that's the start of the project. It can be larger, no problems. Um, you know, we have to, the district has to confirm, the reason we put it in club runner, the district has to confirm that you're qualified to do the project. The district governor and myself, the district foundation chair have to approve the grant once you hit submit at rotary.org. Um, if we haven't seen it come through the grants committee, we will not pr approve the grant at um, when it comes to us from the Rotary Foundation. So it must come through the grants committee and the grants committee has to approve it as well. Um, so, yeah. And I've already kind of talked about sustainability, you know, so I'm not going to go out and talk more about this. Um, sustainability is very, very important. We want to make sure multiple generations are going to uh, have benefits from these projects. And I believe now I'm going to hand this over to Katie. Yep, that's correct. Good morning, everyone. So as the district stewardship chair, I'm going to talk about your stewardship responsibilities, the first of that being financial management. Uh, ultimately, keeping accurate financial records when you're working through the grant process is key with either a district or a global grant. Uh, once you receive the funds, it's important to have a plan for distributing them and tracking them. So you'll also want to use a traceable method such as a credit card, a bank card, a check. That way you can ensure that you're keeping track of the transaction details. Uh, the big takeaway there is do not use cash. And I feel like I should say it a second time. So please use a traceable method uh, when you're spending the grant distributed funds. Um, specifically with a global grant though, you do need to have a separate account for your grant um, expenses. It's not required for a district grant. You can pay it from your general club funds, uh, but sometimes people do set them up just because it makes the tracking of the funds a little bit easier. So that one is up to you. Um, on the next slide, we'll talk about document retention. So all of your grant documents should be accessible to everybody in your club. It can be uh, hard copies if you prefer like a three ring binder, or you could do it electronically and have a Dropbox where people could jump in and take a look. Um, you do want to designate a point of contact. And I liked what Sandy said earlier about having multiple people in charge means no one's in charge. I certainly have felt that before. So I also would advocate for designating one person to be in charge of retaining um, and or uploading the documents. You do want to keep the copies of them for at least five years. And I will also add if you're uploading or sharing checks to show proof of spending, it is totally fine to redact the account numbers or the routing numbers if you're concerned about that from a security perspective. When we look at the proof of spending, I don't actually need to see those numbers. So don't worry about it if you want to redact those. Um, I will also add, I travel a lot for work. So I always have like tons of receipts. And when you go to do the expense report and you need all of your receipts, I know that feeling and you will feel that a little bit when you're managing your grant process. I use an app called Tiny Scanner. Um, that way I can just take a picture of the receipt hard copy and I can email it to myself, it'll send it as a PDF. So there's a lot of options out there. I'm not trying to plug any particular app, but I would recommend finding one or even just taking a picture with your phone so that you have a second copy of it. We all probably have a million receipts floating around in our wallets and purses. So if you can just get a photo of it, then you'll know that you always have a backup in case that hard copy receipt goes AWOL. Um, reporting requirements. So reporting is a key component of good stewardship and grant management. And it's important for a couple of reasons. So reporting verifies that the grants were managed properly and implemented in accordance with Rotary grant policies. It provides an opportunity for communication between partners, building trust to support future projects. It allows project partners and the foundation to celebrate successes but also to learn from challenges that we've had with certain grant projects. Uh, it certainly provides valuable data to the foundation and it allows Rotary to demonstrate to current and future donors our effectiveness and the impact of our grants. Um, it also encourages future giving because donors are confident that their funds are in fact being used as intended. 
Um, so on the next slide, district grant reports, a couple of things to point out here. For the district grants, the club must file a report every six months. This goes on the individual project report tab in Club Runner. Now the clock for the six months starts the day that your check is issued. So even if there have been nominal project updates, or in fact, maybe no updates at all, you still do have a requirement to go into Club Runner and let us know, right? Because what we don't want is we give you a check and then we never hear from you again. So it's helpful just to say, hey, we're still working through some kinks, right? We're still waiting for the ground to thaw or whatever it might be to start the project. But every six months, we do need a project update into Club Runner. Um, your club will be assigned a liaison from the grants committee and that person can will likely reach out to you to remind you of your upcoming reporting date, but they can also help you go in and, and put uh, the update in. So when the project's complete, a final report must be entered into Club Runner and you just label it final report. Uh, that needs to be done within 60 days of completing your project. And in this final report, that's when you would need to make sure that all of your receipts or invoices, bank statements, checks, are all uploaded to the documents tab in Club Runner itself. Um, it's certainly not meant to be a daunting task. I know I just gave you a lot of dates and requirements, um, but essentially what we need to see is that you spent the money in the right way. And in fact, that you spent the money, right? And you didn't just take off with it. Um, this is a screenshot and Sandy's going to jump into Club Runner in a second so we can show you it live. But once you've got your grant put in, you'll see this page with a few tabs across the bottom. You'll notice that the documents tab I had just referenced as to where the upload should go for your receipts, invoices, checks exists right there in the middle of the page. But I'd like to direct your attention to that purple box. And that purple box is the individual project report tab. This is where you will enter your interim reports and also where you will enter your final report. So let's pretend like we've just clicked right into that purple box and we'll see on the next slide that that pops open a window that looks like this. Um, you'll notice that when you are entering reports, you do have the option if you want to change the font, change the color, um, any of that's available to you. Sometimes it's just helpful to quickly see something in a different color usually triggers to me that something new has been added. Um, you can even highlight them, whatever makes it easier for you is fine, but this is where I would go. Um, as the stewardship chair every six months to check and see that there's an update. So as a best practice, I would suggest putting the date in first, because that way we can ensure that an update has been given within a six month window and then something short. So you can see here, this is a screenshot from a old Lakewood Rocky River Sunrise Club. Just a one sentence update is totally fine. Um, sometimes people put their names or their initials on that, and certainly that's helpful if there's any questions that we might have about the project, <clears throat> but to be honest, it's not necessary. So just a date and an update is really all I need to tick the box to say, thanks for being compliant. Um, and based on that date too is how we'll track the next six month report. So if you entered a, re a report update today, then your next report would be due August 10th. Okay. And so Sandy, I think you are going to jump in live. Thank you, Katie. So we're going to take just a second for me to um, jump in to Club Runner. I don't know if there are any questions that need to be answered or if anyone has any right now, but I'll turn over to my other presenters. And if anyone has any questions, let me get me, let me bring up. Let me um, Sandy, I, you know, I just want, I'm going back through the uh, questions in the chat. Some I've are, we've already answered, okay. but one, uh, you know, Bud Thomas did mention something about a global grant and that um, they were able to uh, manage the funds from the U.S. from their club side versus doing managing the funds from the club down in whatever country they were working with. That is possible. Um, they try to like to have the funds to be managed by the clubs in 
the countries which the projects are being done, but some, I, I, I hate to say this about any, you know, clubs or anything like that. Some clubs are not good at managing funds. So we've had funds disappear or they've been mismanaged throughout the history of grant projects. So Rotary International has allowed us to start managing them from the, uh, the, the partner side. So from the U S side, so that is available. Again, if you have those kind of questions, feel free to reach out to me directly and we'll discuss them. Okay. Let me see if I'm, did I successfully bring up the website? Okay. You did. <laughs> All right, folks, this is new. This is based on feedback that we received last year that if we could um, obviously get through the information that we need to share with you, but also if we could take time to have a more meaningful demo of Club Runner. So we are going to start at the beginning. Um, this is ro your Rotary District 6630.org would be the website where you can manage these grants. Um, I've got it bookmarked there. So you go right up in the corner to log in. You're going to need your Club Runner username and password. Click log in. Oh, it took a while earlier. Um, so that's unusual, by the way. Usually you jump right in. I know that a lot of times they're doing maintenance and things. Um, Larry mentioned Rotary International was down today for maintenance. But this um, slow entry is new to today. Yesterday I popped right in. There we go. Okay, so, all right, what's going on? Oh, let me go to home. Normally it normally it would take you here to the front screen. And if not, you saw what I did. I just clicked home and it took me right back to the to the main home home page because that's where you're gonna need to be. So once you've logged in, you know you're logged in because your name will pop up here. You go to foundation drop down. And then in the foundation drop down right at the bottom is grant materials and module. So we talked about all these resources being available to you. If you click in there, these are last year. Some of them will remain the same, but next week we will have them updated for you. Um, that's where, and you can, they'll be there all year and you can go there anytime um, to retrieve any sort of information. Um, but when you want to actually, sorry, when you want to input your, club inquiry, when you're ready to do your application, when you're ready to do your um, interim report or your final report, you're going to be going to the grant module. When you click on, um, it's going to take, at least for me, it takes me right to submit a grant request. When we, use, when we say grant inquiry or your project idea, this is the page we're talking about. If it doesn't take you directly to this page, because I know in years past it didn't for me, I've had to click submit a grant request over here. So if some, if you've done that and it takes you to a screen that doesn't take you directly to the submit a request, click on it and it will. So here is where, and this is all that's needed. In addition to your MOU and qualifying, all that we need in order for you to be scheduled to present to the grant committee is this page to be filled out. Larry has gone in, there's a, uh, let me pop in here, we've got an example. So you would just put the name of your project, of course, where it's going to be happening here. And he's got some instructions. By the way, we're going to share screen captures. So you'll be getting those as well. Um, we'd much rather you, you know, watch this demo um, and know that you'll get the pages later so that you're not frantically taking notes and you're able to really concentrate on what we're showing you here today. But Here's where you would put in your description, and that's an overview of the project, who the beneficiary is, how it will benefit them, um, how was the need determined. So I, I love an example that Rick Collett gave last year or maybe a couple years ago where they had one project in mind. It was they really wanted to do an environmental project. They had in mind what they wanted to do. It was going to benefit the metro parks, and they went to meet with so excited and explained their project. And the Metro Park said, yeah, that's all good and fine, but you know what we really need? We need this. <laughs> and so they shifted gears and it was all in, in reaction to what 
their benefit beneficiary said, this is what we really need. So let me hop out of this one. I'm going to go now to some that were um, submitted last year so that we can show you what um, an actual, oh, where'd it go? Where's my example? At? Hold on a sec. There it is. Okay, so when the time comes and you go to submit a grant request, here's what we need before you can present to the committee. Your project name. So something that is easily identifiable, explains, logically explains what your project is. In this case, the Hunger Warriors, Warriors Epiphany Shoe Boxes. And then you can see here that um, Westlake Bay Village went in and added their description. That tiny little box, it has, it allows you to put in more than just a few sentences. And you'll see here that we it, we can scroll down and, and read that. And what they included was what the focus of the project was about, who it was going to benefit, why they're doing it, how the Rotarians were going to put these boxes together to benefit, um, what the boxes were going to include, um, just so that the committee and, and your club has a pretty good idea of what is going to be presented so that we can decide whether or not it fits within the areas of focus um, and that it's well thought out. Uh, also, you'll have a drop down. Anyone who attended the grant management seminars will be there. Um, so needless to say, one of the folks who qualified by attending the grant seminar is who should be inputting this information. You'll identify yourself and then you'll identify the <clears throat> budget that you have um, set aside for this particular project. So they put this in, they came and presented to the committee. The committee said, this is fundable. This sounds like a great project. Um, please continue on and fill out the rest of the application. So the application, and you saw I, the way I get to it is I just clicked on application takes me to a new screen. Um, anything in red here, it's instructions. And I put right on it to add your information, click on the edit button below, not the pencil. If you click on the pencil, you're gonna change our instruction box. So you would click on edit, this little box pops up, and here's where you fill in more of your details. So the first question is, give us a general description of this project. And it says, overview who it'll benefit, you know, a lot, a lot of times here's where we want to see the area of focus. So it doesn't have to be overwhelming. Some projects are more complicated and there's more information here, but I chose this one on purpose because I wanted to show you that, it, that this does not have to be a daunting task. Um, you, I want to show something. Make sure please that you hit save. Sometimes you don't hit save and folks get crazy because they're, they're so upset. Where is what I've submitted? Hit save and it'll save. Um, then go back to the next one, community assessment and impact. Explain how you decided on that community partner and the project. So in my example with Pugga Falls, they would have said we met with the Metro Parks and they identified a great need and our Rotarians were able to um, provide the resources and, and uh, to fulfill that need. So you want to just talk about the, the, the how you came about doing this and the impact. Again, you do it the exact same way. You hit edit and you enter your information there. Next one, sustainability. Now in this instance, this was a one and done program. The program is set for January 5th, celebration only. Once the boxes are fulfilled and distributed, the project is complete. If it was something, um, a few years ago, Akron bought a tractor for a community um, garden, a, a cooperative farm, and you know the committee wanted to know, Where's that tractor gonna be stored? How's that tractor gonna be? Um, how's the maintenance gonna be? How's it gonna, how is this investment that we're making into this tractor, how is it going to be protected? So that's the type of information they wanna know. Cooperating organizations, in this case, it was the club and the crisis center that was distributing the boxes. Could, you know, could be another club, a, a neighboring club, could be a Kiwanis, could be a chamber. We just wanna know who else is involved in this project. And then finally, the implementation plan. Timing is so important. 
please, please, please include your timing in your implementation plan because if when the committee goes to review your um, application and we see you know, June of 2024, we're going to be planting a garden or we're going to do a butterfly garden or we're going to distribute um, school supplies in, in mid-August. Those kinds of projects, while extremely worthwhile, may not, they're not a match for the district grant because the funding simply won't be approved and distributed in time. Um, but other steps too. Here's where in my presentation, I said sometimes some logistical problem might pop up and you realize, wow, to really get this done and to get this done right, we need an expert in something else, you know, especially the clubs that undertake um, building things or supplying, you know, landscaping to organizations or, you know, um, peace gardens and things like that. You might need a landscape architect or something like that. So here's where putting out a really good implementation plan will help. That's the application. So that's the application tab um, that needs to, those all questions need to be answered before your project can be approved. So over here, we approved fundability. We say, yep, it's a project that we would, that we would support over here. We have to see that you've got all of your ducks in a row. All of these, all of these questions needs to be answered. And then the other thing that has to be done before we can approve is your budget needs to be input. <clears throat> so in this case, I like this, this example um, because they were able to describe what they were going to be putting in those boxes. They identified where they probably will be buying it. Again, you're, you're, you're guessing, <laughs> you're, you're planning where you're going to do this. My guess is they, they chose these three places because they're economical um, stores to get at and they'll go wherever the prices are right. But you can see that the budget matches what they um, reported in their first inquiry down here, the expenses have to total 5,000 and their income has to total 5,000. Most of the time, the description and income is going to be what your club is investing in this project and what the grant match is going to be. Sometimes it's 50-50 because that's what your club can afford. Um, this part also has to total what your budget is. These two figures have to always match. Um, Katie, especially you, but any one of the presenters, if I misspeak or you think I should have covered something, hop on and let me know. Um, but that that's really important that all of these, <clears throat> sorry guys for the frog in my throat. It's really important that all of these numbers match. Documents, Katie mentioned this in her uh, presentation. Documents is where you want to put your receipts. And I, we we chose this project um, for a reason, and I will show that in a moment, but I want to talk about how exciting it is when we see pictures. So upload pictures, be proud of what you've done. We can use these in the district newsletter with your permission, and, um, but, but you know, let's show our Rotarians out there in the community and the great impact that we have. Let's um, strut our stuff a little bit and make, uh, make people aware of what we're doing. But as you're working through your project and everybody's different, maybe you're going to upload receipts as you get them. Maybe you're going to wait and do it at interim reporting. Maybe you're going to wait and do it at your final report. The most important thing is that you do it. <laughs> and here is what was uploaded for this particular project. Um, you will get a gold star from Katie if you give her a summary of the receipts. Um, that is really helpful, especially with those projects that have a lot of receipts. And I've had those. So here. The folks from Westlake Bay Village gave her a summary, but that's not that's not enough. It can't just be that. They also provided with uh, with their summary all of these receipts. And here's why Katie made the recommendation. You know, use a, an app, take a picture. You know, get them all in one location so that when it's time to do this, you've got them all there and ready to go. You see that they made a note. They've made notes. I've had to do that occasionally. Um, so. So it's a great example. There's um, so great example. We we would think that our treasurer would have the best example of giving the receipts. Um, Terry's uh, club did a fantastic job. So I'll close that out and move over. Um, project overview. I love this tab for lots of reasons. Um, when I'm reviewing as a committee member, and I've taught other committee members this too, um, when it's time to approve a project, I click on this tab. Because if something's missing, it's really easy to see what's missing. 
So again, the red is our instructions to you. The description down here, if, if one of these was empty or sometimes all of them are empty, we know they're not ready and I move on to the next one. But even for you, folks that are here taking, taking responsibility for your club's project, you wanna give an update to your board of directors. Click on this tab, hit print. Hopefully that shows, did it show? Did it change? Yes. Okay. So look how look how professional of an overview this is. You want to give your board of directors, hey, this is our project this year. This is where we're at with it. Um, it's just, I think it's a great way to to just um, have a snapshot of what your what your project is and where you are on it. And again, we utilize it to see what's going on. Um, here's another really important. There are two places where budget information is input. I have made this mistake even as your chair as late as a few months ago. I forgot that there's two places where the budget information goes. So if you do, if you click on this tab and you're looking down and you think, why is this zeros? I put in a budget. Where is this? I'll show you. It's the very next tab over individual report, individual project report down here. You scroll down. You also have to add your income and expense down here. Um, you'll see that the income line items are the same as when, well, not quite. They have a tiny bit of money. Um, I forget what we're going to do with that little under underspent money. It's, it's so tiny, but I forget what we're going to do. But anyway, um, here you see that the, the income from their club and the income from the grant is still listed there. But now that they're done with their project, they were able to put all of the detail of their spending in and these two numbers match. Katie, I'm gonna ask you in a minute, what, what did we decide to do because they they slightly underspent their 5,000, I can't remember. But that was all our money. Oh, that's right, okay. I, I, we, we, we had more than 50% contributed. Thank you so much. Um, so what Terry is saying is because all of the money was accounted for that they received from the grant and they matched well more than this. The fact that this is under the 5,000 is fine, but these two numbers still need to match. Okay, so, it, and that again is accountability. The, the income and the expense in this section need to match and they did a fantastic job. So uh, Sandy, one, yes. one thing on here, if you go back to details, um if multiple clubs are working on this pro or part of the project because we, we do have some cluster projects that go on mm -hmm. if you scroll down to the bottom of the page you can add all the different clubs that are helping out on this project as well gotcha and and all of the places to do that all of the places there are little buttons that you click on there's drop downs um so hopefully you know you're able to figure out what you're doing in there if not each grant is assigned a committee liaison and you can reach out to that committee liaison. They've got differing experience levels with club runners. So if you get a, a committee liaison who's not quite um, as familiar with club runner, they know they can reach out to me, they can reach out to Katie and we'll help them as well. Um, I wanna get to the individual project report because this area is so very, well, let me, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting myself. Let me go back to documents for one second. Katie had mentioned up, you know, putting in all of those expenses. It's very, very simple. You click add, um, you put a little title in it. It can be as simple as, you know, Home Depot, re Home Depot receipt or a date if you've got several Home Depot receipts um, and you put the description in. Um, I always pick the same thing, top level, I don't, Anyway, you and then you choose, it's got to be somewhere on your computer so that you can choose it. You pick the document and just upload it. It's that easy. Um, but again, if you have any issues, but that's where you would upload pictures. That's where you would upload um, any documents that you want us to see, any um, receipts, photos, everything like that goes into documents there. Anything, Katie, that I should have talked about until I, so I can go over to the individual project report. I think I covered them all. Okay. So this, this is where your all important six month report goes and where your final report goes. 
I'm going to pop into Akron real quick because we've got a report due. So I'm going to I'm going to do it live <laughs> and show you. So this year our project is Second Chance Village. It is folks that are in transition from homelessness to being housed, but they're not quite, they don't have all of um, their resources covered. And so they need a little gap help. And um, in some cases, they're in, they're maybe 30, 60 days away from housing. Um, so I'm gonna go in and put in my, oops, I'm gonna put in my six month report. Um, again, you don't, you don't mess with the, with the boxes that have red in them because those are our instruction boxes. So I'm gonna click here, I'm clicking right in to where, um, when we're finished with our project, I would answer these questions because that's where the final report comes in. But as Katie mentioned, I'm gonna put the date. So 2-10-24, I usually say update. I know you don't have to, but I say update. And our update is we held an event in November where Rotarians booked breakfast and we served the clients from um, second chance ah. village. We also bought and distributed box. Well, I guess there was. I guess adults wear gloves, huh? Gloves, hats, and other winter clothing accessories. We will continue to hold quarterly events. And then I put my name. That's all. That's really all you need to do for a six month report. So I put the date, 21024, update. We held an event in November where Rotarians cooked breakfast and served the clients from Second Chance Village. We also bought and distributed socks, gloves, hats, and other winter clothing accessories. We will continue to hold quarterly events. And then like Katie mentioned, I like to color code it for her so that when she's going in to check if I've done it, she can easily see it. But that's a six month report. Um, and then, you know, this is one of the ones, um, it probably will go beyond our calendar year or our rotary year because um, although the amount of money that we're spending quarterly may not seem like a lot, it is beyond helpful for them. This is really filling a gap for these folks. We're gonna provide hygiene materials and things like that. So it, it's probably going to take us probably maybe 18 months to spend all of our money, but well worth it. Oh, I need to click the update button. If you don't click the update button, it doesn't save it. So that happens too sometimes, and I almost just did it. So um, it is something to try to be mentally aware. Click update, just check your work. You know, there it is, everything's good. Now when Katie goes to see, Akram will not be delinquent at our next meeting. I've met my obligation and will continue to serve for six months and give another update later. Now I'm gonna go back to the Westlake project because they're completed for the year. And I wanna show you it's really being slow. I promise it's not always this slow. I'm ho we're hoping this is helpful. Let us know either in the comments or reach out to us after if you think this demo is helpful. Okay, now I'm gonna go. Hmm. Why does it keep going in? Sorry, it popped me all the way out. Okay, let's go back to the Wesley. You won't be jumping around this much. <laughs> okay, so Westlake Bay Village has finished their project. They uploaded all those documents I showed you, but they're not quite finished. They had to pop in into their reporting uh, template and let us know. So the first question, you know, is a general question. Give us an update or or. In, in this case, Mary Beth called them completion notes, um, but they, we wanna know, give us a description of the completion of your project. 
So they did. They they gave us, they let us know that they did over 200 boxes with children's items. They participated in handing out the boxes to 50 families. Um, 14 Rotarians were involved and the photos were uploaded. So they give sort of a general overview. Um, then there are other questions, even though it's it's included in their little summary, they took the time. How many people benefited from the project? 50. How many um, how were they impacted? The children of needy, needy families will benefit. They did give more detail up here about what was distributed. Um, this looks like maybe this was answered prior. They had planned on about 50% of their club participating in their overall completion report. They said it was it ended up being 14. Um, you can see here earlier in their project, Mary Beth had given an update back on July 13th and just let us know what was going on, planning to purchase the items. Um, here it said, we, we met to assemble the boxes. So it really is that simple where it's just, um, let us know where you're at on the project. Another good thing to do is this would be a great place where I gave my update, I'm gonna stop, where I gave my update. Um, if we were having an issue, um, that's where you'd wanna let them know. Project on hold. We thought we were going. We were going to be doing landscaping. Turns out uh, they're getting a new sprinkler system. The lawn's going to be torn up. Can't do it until uh, spring. Something like that. You know, anything that's a that's a roadblock. You want to let us know. Having trouble getting city approval for this project. It's on their agenda in August. Whatever. You know, anything that that lets us know. Oh, there's a reason this is delayed. It gives the it gives the committee a good idea of what's going on. Couple things that we that you do not need to worry about. See these, I don't know if, if, if it's showing my little cursor, but you do not need to uh, mess with any of the buttons that say completed, approved, uh, cancel grant. Uh, one of them sometimes pops up depending where we are in the cycle, archive. These are for the committee and it can really throw off project management if you do anything with these boxes. So pretend like there's a big red circle with a line through it and don't mess with those. Um, this activity log is also, I know it says add. This again is really for, and, it, and there's a little reminder here. Um, Club Runner automatically adds items there, but also a committee member. If Katie noticed something that she really wanted the other committee members to know or the treasurer noticed something, um, Last year, we had the wrong amount get sent to a club. Um, we made a note here. That's really just that activity log is for the club to man or the, I'm sorry, the committee to manage. I am going to, well, first, let me ask my fellow presenters, anything in Club Runner you were hoping I would cover since this is our first go around with this? <laughs> if you got everything, looks good to me. Perfect. Um, if I have to pop back in, I will, but for now, I want to make sure that we leave plenty of time to finish up and also for Q and A, but I could, I could always hop back in. I don't know if any of those questions, um, if, if, if a fellow presenter can see if there's any, anything in chat that pertains to Club Runner, I'm going to move back over and get the presentation back up on screen. Which is there. Okay. Is my slide back? Hopefully. Okay, good. Thank you, Katie. Okay. So now, who do I turn it over to? <laughs> Let's uh, me. Okay. Larry, you are on. Thank you. So, um, just real quick, you know, we're going a little bit back to global grants. Um, reporting's a little bit similar and a little bit different so you still with global grants um rotary the rotary foundation asks that you report every 12 months and that's done through rotary.org um and same place where you where you submitted your application for your grant um actually with you if you go into that site and again unfortunately i can't show you it um, it will show your approved grant and it will say reports. Um, there's also another tab that will say actions. And so if you click on actions, it'll tell you exactly what reports need to be done and are due. 
Um, but from the district side, you still need to go into Club Runner where you've created, you know, a inquiry and uh, put your application from uh, rotary.org. And you still got to do your 60 day or 60 day updates that uh, Sandy just went over. Um, and those are the same as what she's reported on. You don't have to do anything special. It's here's what's gone on in the last 60 days. Um, we are still working on this project pretty simple stuff um you can also once whenever you do your yearly review or um report to rotary international save a pdf and import it into the documents tab in club runner and then it's there for that portion of it too as well all right next slide sandy all right in summary you know in you know for global grant reports Include in your report how partners were involved, the type of activity, evaluation of the pro of the project goals that you set when you wrote the grant, how are how the area of focus goals were met. Again, you're just it, it's very simple stuff. You don't have to overthink this. Um, how funds were spent um, in you know the global reports. It would be very similar to in our club runner. You're going to list your income. You're going to list your expenses. They got to they got to match out. So, and the number of beneficiaries and how they were benefited. Um, sometimes those numbers increase as the project goes on. Um, the last project I did, we started out with uh, I think it was sixty families that we were bringing fresh water to. We ended up with one hundred and twenty. Um, by the time the project was done, um, still under the same dollar amount um, that we were at. So next. So, um, you know, just kind of in looking back at what we've gone over today, obviously to become a qualified club, you got to attend one of these grant management seminars. And I'm going to apologize because the train's going to come past my house right now and everybody's going to probably hear it. Um, you got to complete the MOUs. There's two of them. There's an MOU and an MOU addendum. And both need to be turned in. By when? Anybody? May 15th? So uh, your PE, your president-elect for the coming year, needs to enter their goals into Rotary Club Central. This is something that, you know, this year it would have been District Governor-elect Dale um, Smith has gone over with those PEs through his training, where this is, how to do it. Um, we're just asking that this gets done. That way we know what your goals are for your club. Um, and it helps me as a foundation chair as well, not only just the grants committee. Um, and meet your per capita giving to the Rotary Foundation for the local uh, district designated funds grants. Again, that does not apply to the global grants. Apply for local district grant, you know, submit the inquiry by May 15th. Earlier, the better, you know, start, start getting it in what I think it was March 15th, you know, start getting it at that date so we can get you, uh, you know, find you fundable a lot sooner and you can start working on putting that grant together that way we can maybe get the money for the grants earlier this year you know beginning of august or whatnot work with an assigned with the assigned liaison on your application you know the liaisons are there to help you um if you have questions use them um, if they don't have the answer, they'll reach out to you know sandy or one of the grant committee officers myself included um schedule your grant presentation again two minute presentation for for the inquiry it, it's it, it's not that difficult grants committee will determine the pro whether project meets fundability requirements and notify the applicant if it does not meet fundability requirements we will pro we may give you some suggestions on how you can make that fundable so that's what we're here to do we're here to help you help your beneficiaries you just advanced me again. Go back one. 
Oh, no. Okay. Go to the next one. Following notification that your district grant project has been approved, you know, that is, you know, approved, not fundable. Fundable, these are two different terms. Fundable is when we say, we hear your, your present two minute presentation, we give you the um, go ahead to work on the application. Then you'll come back in, you know, to the end of July or August and say, here's our application. Um, and the grant committee will review it and everything's there, we'll approve it. Once we have proved that, that your application is, um, we've approved the application, then you you can move forward. We will send you the check. Um, our treasurer will, or Sandy will send out a, or our grant uh, coordinator will send out a letter. It will ask you to provide information where that check's gonna, needs to be mailed to and whatnot, so. Um, and then make sure you're doing your six month reporting and your final report and supporting documentation is all ready to go at the end of the project. So global grant, you know, become a qualified club, attend the grants management seminars. You still got to complete the MOUs, uh, PEs, your president elect still need to enter their goals in Rotary Club Central. Um, we can strike that meat per capita giving to TRF. That That's a... Uh, um, I'll fix that, Larry, for yeah. the next one. Yeah, that's been it left in there from years past. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So apply for a global grant. Still submit that inquiry to uh, in Club Runner um, and work on the application in rotary.org. A community assessment and sustainability plan are key parts of these applications. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach directly out to me. I will be more than happy to walk through this with you. It's very, very easy. Um, it's just getting the right information into the right spots. Uh, work with the, uh, the assigned liaison, which in a global grant will be me. Uh, schedule presentation to the, the grant committee. You know, we still need you to present to the grant committee on the application. We still got to find it um, fundable um for our purposes and uh we'll work together to get it submitted to rotary international following notification that your global grant project has been approved as soon as you get that letter from the rotary foundation saying you've been approved you can start your project you do not have to receive the funds at that point all you need is that approval letter from the rotary foundation you're going to report every 12 months from that point on until your project is complete at uh, rotary.org and every six months in club run. And at the end, you're going to submit a final report. The final report, unlike the funding, is from the host club in the other country. The other country does all reporting. Your, your partner, you as a partner club cannot do the reporting for the Rotary Foundation. They have to do it all. They have to submit it all um this sometimes becomes a sticky point and that's where you reach out to me and i will work with you and the rotary foundation to make sure if we're having reporting issues that those are taken care of next I think all right terry terry i didn't realize i was supposed to be presenting <laughs> oh, I'm like, sorry. You know what, Terry? We talked about because um, I didn't make that training. So I mean, oh, I, can I can do it. I this, can I do guess. it. It's this. I can do it. I think this is our last one before mo, uh, before Q and A. Um, and I had forgotten about that, Terry. I was supposed to get. I'll be that. prepared for the next one. Sorry. My about fault. That. <laughs> my fault. So last year we had a um, Sean. Uh, why is her name escaping me? We had a, a global Gordon. grants coordinator mm -hmm. who. Um, was so familiar with all of the different issues that kind of of cause challenges for our clubs that she put together this slide, um, and we think it's it's good enough information to one last review before we open up for questions. But uh, most common mistakes: incorrect signatures on the MOUs. Easy fix, but it's it's one of those issues where the earlier you start the more time you're gonna to have to make corrections. And when you wait to the last minute, if the wrong person signed, 
you really could jeopardize everything by not getting your MOUs on, in on time. Mostly what happens is the current officers are signing versus your next Rotary years um, president elect and president elect elect are signing. So um, Katie will help you with that, but work early. In the application, um, forgetting to state what the Rotary involvement is going to be. And it can't be enough that we gave them this idea or we're going to oversee or supervise. There needs to be direct and active Rotary involvement for the project because as I mentioned on at the outset, this is more than just handing over money. Um, this is about getting Rotarians involved in community projects and uh, service above self is really important. Failure to ensure that the budget and the financial information in those applications where I kept going back and forth. So the budget tab and the financial information that's in that individual reporting tab have to be the same um, and have to be complete. And we'll help you with that. Um, it happens a lot, even the veterans do it. So um, don't worry about that. We'll let you know how to fix that. Failure to upload all documents that are required for closure. Katie's really great about letting you know what's missing, um, but she also did a great job covering you know, collect your receipts, keep them somewhere local or somewhere localized, make sure that everyone involved with the project knows and understands that they uh, have to have a, a receipt. We had a club that thought they were making great use of the money by buying some used items, I think from a yard sale, and but they had no receipt. They had no receipt. And so there was no way um, to properly account for the spending of that money. So those are just some things that if you want to try to avoid, um, if it happens, we can fix them, um, but um, pay attention to those areas and you'll keep moving along um, and get to, to, to your project a little quicker. Um, next up, questions. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so that we can see one another, um, but the, here's where we want to answer anything that maybe we didn't cover. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback on whether you think the, the demo into Club Runner helped. So unmute yourself um, if you've got any questions. Yes, Don. Hi, hi Sandy. Um, hi. A, a couple questions. Well, one main question. When regarding the uh, district grants um, and the um, budget matching up with the grant totals at the very beginning, does that, when you do your final report, do, does the invoice have to match the budget um, exactly, or the invoices, uh, they'll match the total amount, I mean, or even go over the total amount maybe, but is it, how, how does it match up one-to-one? -one? I mean, we're doing a computer project. Well, our budget a couple months ago, I mean, we're, we're going to, we're going to, provide the same things, but as far as dollars and cents now versus what they were two months ago, based on what computers are available, what pricing is available, when they start buying this stuff, it's it's all going to change. It's not going to be dollar for dollar what it was on the budget three months ago. So is, is that when you do a final report, as long as we have, you know, the money that we gave the or, or, you know, we provided as a grant or, or as a Rotary Club to the organization, the money that we provided as a grant to the organization, uh, as long as that is at least the dollar amount, is that is that OK? You I'm know not, what I'm saying? I do understand um, what you're saying. Katie, do you want to feel that one? Do you want me to start new thing? Well, yeah. Yeah. The short answer is, yeah, that's fine. OK, <laughs> good. So I know. You might say this is going to be a $10,000 project. Turns out when you start getting bids, it comes back at less. As long as you have matched the grant that was provided by the committee, and that is what is laid out on the individual okay. project report tab, as opposed to the budget report tab, which you're going to do at the beginning, then you're totally fine. Okay. Um, go but ahead, you Sydney. also need to adjust your budget totals and numbers to match whatever you're actually doing, right? <clears throat> so it's okay that you said initially it was $10,000 and now it comes in at 
9,995 or 10,100, but you need to make sure whatever you're putting in there matches and you adjust that total. <clears throat> That's so you're I'm saying we need to go back at the end of the year if we need to go back if we've lived we've shown a budget and we have all this computer equipment at these prices then we go back and and adjust our whole budget as well um and and come in we're probably we'll come in over because our rotary club's going to fund whatever you know whatever differences there are or, or changes we just need to, that has to match the final report. So we're going to have to do a final report and then we're going to have to go back and change our original budget to match that final report. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And and the example that Sandy showed of my club, we originally had our budget at $5,000, but the total came in at 4,993. And so right. we adjusted all of those things to say our budget, our project, right? See, right. Yeah, I'm trying to get to it. Four thousand nine hundred ninety-three. So originally it was five thousand, and it wasn't gotcha. as detailed. But then when it was, when they came in, when it was finished, they had all of these, and it gotcha. So does that? Help? Yeah. So okay. Well, that I mean, you're answering my question. I guess I have to go back and change. I was thinking I could just show the totals year in project with all the invoices and so forth, but I have to go back and change all this stuff on the budget as well. So you is what you're saying it on the budget tab, right? So in this Westlake example, their budget tab still shows 5,000. Okay. Well, that's my question. Yeah. Yep. It's down here. It's, it's in your individual report tab where the final report goes in. Here gotcha. is where Terry adjusted and put the the true expenditures that are backed up with receipts okay and, and it came in different. okay okay and, but up uh, there we have got gotcha. you okay yeah, that's so. that's what i was um it, so you under that tab then well you still have to show you're going to show all the invoices and all of the receipts anyway um mm -hmm. so that okay that's all i needed to know so it, it'll come over it'll come in over probably, but it's not going to be exact dollar for dollar. And that's impossible to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when I make the movement for a grant to be closed, what I look for is that in that individual project report tab, the top part where it has your grant and the value you received, and then the next item line item would be the club and what the club donated. I need to at least see that matched, if not more, Certainly. right? Certainly. You only ask for two thousand, but you spend five thousand. The club has to make that up, sure. and then that number has to match the expenses. So I look at those two things, and then I check all the receipts and make sure that that all adds up. And then okay. there's a final report in there. We would make a motion at our next meeting to close the grant out, and then you're done with your obligations on that particular one. Great, thank you. Yes. You're Thanks muted, Doris. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll unmute her. Oh. Okay. okay, thank you, Katie. Um, yes, I would like to ask Katie, you know, when we started our project for our walking trail in Garrettsville, uh, you know, we didn't have any idea what it was gonna cost, but we knew that we could raise the money and do it. Uh, and it was in, uh, it's a memorial trail for Tom Collins. And we had a lot of support for that. And uh, so someone put in there the budget, and I'm not sure who it was, but they put in there that was the budget was $10,000. And I think we received like $1,400, I'm not sure, on that one. Maybe it was $2,500 on that one. Um, now, when we got our estimate for the trail, it was $35,000. And then we didn't have 35,000. So we started fundraising. Uh, the next estimate came in, they updated it the next year and said it was 45,000. Um, so, you know, here is my budget for $10,000. Uh, you know, how do I show um, that we have spent, you know, our, our required amount? So in that specific example, the club got 2,500 from us in terms of a grant. So you really just need to show the expenditures for 5,000, right? The 2,500 grant 
plus your at least 2,500 match. Okay. Larry, do you want to add to that? Um, Katie's correct on that. Um, even though your, your expense went up, you do not need to bring that into this grant, leave this grant the way it's written at 10,000 and just account for those expenses that add up to that 10,000 for that section of the, you know, small section of that project okay. the projects a lot larger than what your grant is. Yes. So um we can talk more about how to manage that you know offline um this is kind of a unique situation um but you just want to make sure that you're you're accounting for you know especially for your match and the, what the foundation has given to you for that match um so don't try to make this more complicated than what what it needs to be okay again Thank as we said this is not extremely complicated um and we're here to help you through it so okay thank you thanks larry and katie thank you and it's a wonderful i uh, uh program sandy that you've put together okay. i love it thanks. thank you mm -hmm. robin did you have a question yes so following up on the last question and answer you know that we have the four clubs um, from our cluster uh, got together. Each of, well, three of the clubs got individual club grants for 1405. Um, all together, we contributed $20,000 to build 60 beds with good nights. But each of us <clears throat> in our grants were only. Um, the the grant the district grants covered four beds from each of the clubs so all the clubs together um built distributed and assembled 60 beds but uh the individual club reports really only cover four beds now my question is we haven't quite finished uh, we we finished building all the beds but we haven't quite finished distributing and assembling the beds in the homes. Remember, this project was to build, deliver, and assemble um, wooden frame beds to children who didn't have beds, which has been an amazing project because when you walk into an empty bedroom and leave it as a bedroom, it's a pretty amazing feeling. Um, so my my question is, do you want us to wait until all of the beds are assembled in the rooms of the children, or do you want us to just report now? We have built, we've built all 60 beds. We've delivered and assembled 20 of them, um, which I believe covers the three clubs. In other words, more than 12 beds have been assembled in the children's rooms. Do you want us to finish them out now, or do you want us to wait until all 60 beds are done? All right. Um, with that one, I think I, I followed where you're going. Um, these are all individual projects. So each club is going to have to do their own reporting. It's not a true right. cluster project. Oh, for um, sure. We are all doing our own reporting. Yeah. And, and we, okay. did, we did it this way because I had conversations with your cluster about this at the beginning. Right. right. You know, obviously to, to do the best good we could do for, for the communities because these are all in different communities. Correct. Um, you will wait till you'll have to wait till all the beds have been delivered. Okay. The project is not finished until all the beds have been delivered and put into place. So you'll do your six month reporting and just each club will do their six month reporting and say, here's how many we've built this, how many we've delivered to this point. We expect to deliver the rest within this period, but we'll report in six months again on it. Okay. All right. Sure. Any, any other questions? I don't see any. So even with our additional demo, um, we were able to end on time. We wanted a, an adjournment at 11 o'clock. So um, just a few wrap up items. We will be updating our resources page 
When it's done, we will send it out to all of you um, so that you have those handy. Work early um, so that we can we can try to, as, as Larry said, get our application into Rotary International and, and possibly start distributing funds a little bit earlier than we've been able to in the past. Um, other action items, you know, make sure that if you didn't have two folks on today that that at least two more members of, or at least two members of your club finish um, or I shouldn't say finish that at least two members of your club attend the seminars um, and then appoint one person to be your go to for your MOUs and your your grant inquiry and application. So with that, um, unless there's anything else, we're, we are going to say adjourn and it's supposed to get sunny. So, oh, can, can I add one thing? Uh, just, oh, so yes. that, just so that all the attendees know, if you're from Ashtabula, Burton Middlefield or Medina Sunrise, you had two attendees today. So that you can take the box off. If you are not from one of those three clubs, then you should make sure that someone else from one of, from your club comes to one of our other seminars. There's two more also on Zoom. Awesome. So you guys can get your MOUs done. Okay. Thanks, Katie. That was exciting news. All yeah, right. It looks like maybe Bruce had a question. Bruce, did you? Or did I just imagine? I think he was waving. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're good. I'll, We're I'll good. wave now and say um, so long to everyone. Can the presenters hang on for one second? I was just going to ask that. Thank you, Sandy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank great you. job, guys. Very helpful. Bye. Great. Good job. Have a great day. Thank you. And by the way, the demo was ready? great. Oh, good. Thank you. Whoever said that. <laughs> that Thanks, bud. Oh, Bye, bud. Thank you. I do think the demo was was really good. All right, there we go. All right, I got rid of a few folks. Yeah. <laughs> I just I, wanted to debrief. <laughs> um, I'll make the update to that um, slide where, where I had forgotten to pull off that that requirement. Um, anything else? Um, I panicked a little bit. I felt like I was talking way too much at the beginning, but honestly, it, it all worked.